Welcome to the AES Thought Leader Theater, brought to you by ASI. I'm your host, Kimberly Bottom, and Emma Knott joins us now. Thank you for coming, Emma. Thank you for having me. And you are part of an initiative called Hope for HH. So first and foremost, what is HH? Well, HH is a hypothalamic hematoma. It is a lesion or a tumor, which is congenital. Uh, it is located uh, in the third ventricle or on it. Mm -hmm. um, it is closely attached to the hypothalamus and it causes all manner of difficulties. Um, epileptic uh, in large form, um, but other difficulties too. Um, there are, it's a very rare syndrome. It's a complex syndrome. Mm -hmm. The symptoms um, are varied. They often overlap. Um, those who are diagnosed most quickly tend to be those that have the most overt symptoms. So for example, precocious puberty mm. is one of the symptoms that um, many, but not all, hypothalamic hematoma patients have. Uh, a child, an infant with precocious puberty is easily spotted uh, and their diagnosis may come quickly. Mm -hmm. The problem for those without such an obvious marker, phys physiological marker, is that the symptoms can be very subtle. Are there epileptic symptoms but the epilepsy uh, will be rare and the most characteristic form of epilepsy that really defines and indicates hypothalamic hematoma is gelastic epilepsy, mm -hmm. laughing epilepsy. Mm -hmm. In some cases the laugh will be a normal laugh or appear to be normal mm -hmm. but it will be in inappropriate situations. In other cases it will be a mechanical type of laugh and the pa pa parents will often say my child has a funny laugh um, but doctors won't recognize it mm -hmm. and it won't be recognized as an epileptic seizure. Wow. And because what this um, hypothalamic hematoma also does, it, um, through its epilepsy we think, it causes um, uh, autistic spectrum type disorders. It causes cognitive um, delay or retardation. And so many times those who have the gelastic epilepsy but don't have uh, the other more obvious forms of epilepsy, they will, those children will be misdiagnosed as, as having autism. Mm -hmm. And the seizures will be uh, seen by doctors as being a behavioral manifestation of autism. Wow. Um, so it's more, complica more, more complicated still than that, mm -hmm. um, but that probably gives the best overview um, of um, how hypothalamic hematoma might manifest in a young child. Wow. So tell me then what Hope for HH hopes to accomplish. Is it just awareness? Is it research? Is it funding? Well, it's all three. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, patient support. Mm -hmm. Patient support is at the heart of everything we do. The best way that our patient community um, want us to support them is obviously to find a cure. Right. But before that, um, it's also to find the right diagnosis for their child. For all of the reasons that I have mentioned, often diagnosis doesn't come until a child is six, seven, eight, sometimes even into adulthood. We have patients who join our um, network and ask for information in their 20s and 30s because they're only just being diagnosed. Um, so by spreading awareness to doctors, um, by asking um, them to follow our specific protocols which have been created by our medical advisory board of experts, um, we hope first of all that we will achieve early diagnosis mm -hmm. because when somebody is diagnosed at least we can get them onto a treatment plan and there are options out there for our patients. We're very lucky mm -hmm. in many ways. Um, we have a number of different surgical options which have had a high degree of success. Mm -hmm. They don't always lead to cure. They don't always lead to um, ameliorate but in many, many cases, perhaps 70% plus, they will lead to an amelioration and in very few cases, but some, complete cure. Wow. So we know if we can get early diagnosis, um, the options for the child uh, are so much better. So we push for um, awareness to tell people, doctors, neurologists, paediatricians, what this syndrome is, what to look for. Um, when we get diagnosis, we put patients on the right pathways. We put them in touch with doctors who are experts and we ask our expert doctors to liaise with um, other expert neurologists who may not have come across an HH before mm -hmm. to help provide a unique treatment plan for that patient. And you guys are uniquely positioned to do that because you are all over the world. You're international. We are. We are incredibly lucky. Um, we are set up here. We're 10 years old. We're celebrating our 10-year anniversary this year as a non-profit uh, registered and based um, here in the US. Um, but as you will tell from my accent, um, <laughs> I have a, um, a different background. Uh, I've been with the um, 
uh, organization pretty much since its um, uh, onset and in the last three or four years we have set up a satellite a sister organization in the UK, mm -hmm. Hope for HH UK, but also under the auspices of um, the American organization we have a huge amount of resources. We're very fortunate to have a Russian American uh, and she works closely with the Russian community so we have an international outreach um, uh, committee. Mm -hmm. Uh, through uh, the work we do in Europe and our medical